Yeah, so it's me and Sage. <laughs> so it's me and Sage back over here at the office today, and I uh, looks like I'm gonna settle a uh, a trip and fall case today. I gotta send over the paperwork a little later. Thank you, and uh, that's what's going on right now. Yeah, I gotta get the internet services set up. Uh, and I'm gonna take her over here and get something to eat from the deli real quick. But um, I gotta make a few phone calls. Don't put your hands on the paintings, okay? You're not supposed to touch them. For the look at. That's what art is about. Art is about appreciating, not touching. You know, not unless you're making the art. Which I, I gotta bring y'all art over here. The art that you made me. I'm gonna put that in here. But yeah, that gumball machine, we were gonna have a. I was gonna surprise you with that gumball machine, but um. Yeah, well, it doesn't have the glass globe, so that's the problem. The globe didn't come with it, and uh. The stand was messed up, so they're gonna send us another one. And uh, I'll. I'll get it fixed when uh. I gotta send that one back, though. So I gotta package that back up and. The table is coming today, and let me move this stuff out of the way so you can sit down. We're gonna, we're gonna go get our food, and we're, we're gonna come back here. You hear me? Yeah, don't touch that. Don't touch that. We're gonna get our food, um, and we're gonna come back here. And we're gonna sit down, and. Uh, you have an idea what you want to eat? Mm -hmm. You want to go get a menu first? Mm -hmm. Let's go get us a menu and then we can kind of get an idea of what we want to eat. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Alright, cool, cool, cool. One thing for certain about this office is that it definitely is a lot colder than my office upstairs. Which is cool. I'm going to have to get a throw for that couch. But, um, right now Right now we're just working. Isn't that right, Sage? Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't got all my furniture in, but we're still doing work. Still working. It doesn't stop. I'm really bouncing back and forth between um, handling these cases and getting stuff for this office. Like I, my table just came for the the front area, so. Um, I'm probably going to put that together really quickly because it's like 4 o'clock. It's like 4 o'clock right now. So I'm going to take some time and uh, get that together. And I tell you what, since I moved to this front area, I have just been meeting people left and right. I mean, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize this front area was this busy because I always parked in, parked in the back and just dealt with the people who you know kind of uh, dealt in the work suite area but now you know this is uh, turning turning into something else turning into something new I'm really excited about it uh, I gotta pack up this bubblegum machine I think I'm gonna put a couch back here I think I'm gonna put it I think I may put a couch back here or a love seat and uh, maybe another chair there, I saw a chair not too long ago but I was trying to get him to come down on the price of it because I was like I'm not paying that too much so I'm gonna wait and see if it's still there in like another uh, few days and then go back and say alright let me get that chair from y'all because it would have really went nice in here it would have fit well uh, yeah, it really would have fit well. I might, I might go back and get it if I can get him to come to come down. I'm talking about rock bottom prices, you know. What's going on, guys? It's the Big Rig Bull, Texas Truck Accident Lawyer, Rashard Alexander. Here again today on episode 22, we're going to talk about onboard electronics. 
for commercial motor vehicles. So we're not talking necessarily about passenger cars or anything. We're talking about the electronics uh, principally that you will find on an 18-wheeler or a tractor or a commercial motor vehicle. Okay? So we're not really going to cite law and everything like that today. It's more, mostly about uh, the mechanics uh, dealing with accidents on the roads and the uh, equipment that is supposed to monitor and uh, prevent them. So let's get started. So essentially, there are two types of onboard electronics. Okay, there is vehicle equipment which is considered part of the commercial motor vehicle, and it affects the performance of the commercial motor vehicle. And then you have fleet and operations equipment. Fleet and operations equipment principally is to monitor, assess, and evaluate fleet performance. So we're not talking about uh, you know a single truck. We're talking about a, a wide plethora or a wide array of different vehicles that are under a, uh, uh, the operating authority of one motor carrier or one owner operator. Okay, so uh, vehicle data bus communications uh, were established by the Society of Automotive Engineers. These standards J1587, 1708, and J1939 were the standards that essentially allow various manufacturers to put together different components to service commercial motor vehicles without direct wiring. Okay, so this is the first time when this happened with the Society of Automotive Engineers, this was the first time essentially that you could have uh, subsystems of, uh, of, of engine parts that work together, uh, not, long, not just the engine, but the entire network of uh, the car or I'm sorry, not the car, but the commercial motor vehicle that didn't have to be wired together. So when I say that, what, I, what I'm essentially saying is we're talking about the subsystems that were manufactured by varying companies and so we're talking about like for example the transmission, the engine, the brake system, all those things now could work together and they didn't require direct wiring. This kind of changed, this was like game changing. And so uh, along with that there's a, a power line carrier uh, that is connected from the tractor to the trailer. And this power line carrier also has allowed 18-wheelers uh, or tractor trailers to be monitored in a much uh, more safer um, way because now the trailer can alert the uh, driver to possible blowouts, possible tire failures, uh, possible roll, uh, rollover uh, situation or a jackknife situation. Okay. So the power line carrier, like I was just saying, it extends the um, it extends the uh, the VDC or the vehicle data bus communications to the trailer as well, and it's commonly observed in the anti-lock uh, braking systems. Yes, what you commonly see, like I just like I just brought up. So mentioning uh, the ABS systems or the anti-lock braking systems, let's talk about that a bit. Okay, so anti-lock brake systems have been mandated in 18 wheelers or trackers since 1990. They are pretty much composed of a combination of sensors and modulators that monitor wheel speeds and prevent brake uh, lockup. Um, when you combine the uh, anti-lock braking system with traction control, traction control and the anti-lock brake system combined will prevent excessive wheel spin in low acceleration events. Okay? Now, this excessive wheel spin can cause damage to the axles and the drive shaft of the commercial motor vehicle, which is why you need traction control. Okay, because what it essentially does is it transfers the power to other drive wheels and it uh, commands the engine to reduce engine speeds. To reduce, uh, to, yeah, to reduce the engine speeds so that the wheels uh, don't completely tear the car up. Um, so. The other thing is, so we have the anti-lock braking system, we have the traction control, and we have the stability control. All three of these work together, okay? The stability control systems, I mean, it's common sense, it, it, just what it says it does. I mean, when, you can, when you can bond this with the anti-lock braking system and the traction con control systems, it is essentially additional sensors that monitor wheel rotation and the steering input. And they, anytime there's a uh, potential loss of control, uh, on a tractor or 18-wheeler, 
um, and it's detected by the uh, stability control systems, it results in a reduction in the engine speed and application of selective braking to a particular wheel, meaning that it can automatically kick in and say, okay, we're going to slow this down and we're going to turn this particular way or stop this particular way so that this truck will not turn over, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about very briefly was tire monitoring systems. So, essentially there are two tire, uh, two tire monitoring systems. There's the mechanical systems which are typically attached to the valve stem of the tire. Um, it helps reduce underinflation. You can usually just look at it right away and tell, you know, uh, if it's underinflated, overinflated, or whatever. Then you have electronic tire pressure systems. And those systems are usually attached to each wheel and they transmit data to the, to the cab or the mounted receiver. Um, and it alerts the truck driver to blowouts, tire failures, and incorrect inflation uh, pressures. Lastly, I want to talk about automatic tire inflation systems. I mean, none of this stuff right here, uh, even the automatic tire inflation systems, will not prevent you from having to do ins you know, your inspections and whatnot. I mean, this should be common sense for most truck drivers, but it needs to be said. Um, but with automatic tire inflation systems, uh, you use compressed air from the braking system on a commercial vehicle and a system of va uh, valves that is plumbed through the axles and the wheel ends. And so any time that the, you know, the system detects that the uh, tires are underinflated, the, uh, the, the, um, that's, the air is pumped through valves through that system to reinflate it or to keep it at a certain pressure. So this wraps up today. Like I said, this, is, has, this has, I'm not going to say it doesn't have anything to do with truck accidents because it definitely does. But this is not law necessarily. This is really about trying to dive into the mechanical side of understanding how trucks actually work. So I hope this was helpful to you. I'll be back again tomorrow to start part two where we will talk about uh, fleet and operations equipment and we may have to wrap up a bit of the vehicle equipment because I don't think I talked about transponders and some other things. But I'll be back tomorrow. You take it easy and have a nice day, nice night, wherever you are.